All right, I found my necklace. Isn't that pretty? I just got it. It's got lapis blue stone. It's the tree of life. Uh, it's not because I'm involved in anything Kabbalah like or nothing like that. Hey, you know, even I like the rainbow and I hate that other people have taken that. So I'm just saying. Okay, so, oh, I was watching the second uh, study video. And we need to look at some more definitions. I got to figure out how to, <clears throat> how to get it. Okay, so whenever you guys want to go study the Bible, I love going on www.blueletterbible.org and okay, let me share my screen. I've been using this for a while and I really like it. I'm gonna sneeze. Oh no, don't wanna do that. <coughs> Excuse me. Mm. <coughs> Excuse me. Oof. Okay. Excuse me. So the word, okay, I wanna switch up here like. This is where you can switch to what version you want. And I like the New King James. But I wanted to look up the word evil because when the last one, the, the number two study thing that we were looking at, we we're looking up the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And then we were looking up the tree of life, right? So let's look up this word evil. Uh, you got to go to the toolbox over here. We we put in the word evil on that quick navigate thing, and I'm using the New King James Version. Up here, you get the Masoretic text for anybody who knows how to read from right to left. And we're looking up the word evil. Let's just see what that means, okay? You know, because sometimes, oh, there's the tree again. Oops, I better turn that off. Oh, you're getting text. Okay, all right, keep going. The knowledge of good and evil. So here it is, H, which the H stands for Hebrew because this is gonna be the Old Testament because the way they translated the Bible is they did the Old Testament is from the Hebrew and somehow they all turned Greek in the New Testament. I'm pretty certain that those disciples spoke Hebrew but for some reason, they translated the New Testament and the Greek. So it's probably because it was written a long time after. Who knows what the deal is? But click on the letter, like H7451. Every time I say that, I think of that game, Battleship. <laughs> you sunk my battleship. Okay, so let's just... um read the definitions. Oh, by the way, let's listen to the pronunciation. Strong's H7451, Ra, Ra, and second entry, Ra, Ra, and third entry, Ra, Ra, Ra. Oh, Ra, 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 uh, uh. so she's singing about evil. All right, let's see what it means. I was referring to that um, Lady Gaga song. All right, so it says right down here, the King James translates Strong's H7451 in the following manner. Evil, wickedness, wicked, mischief, hurt, bad, trouble, sore, affliction, ill, Adversity, ill-favored, harm, not, noisome, grievous, grievous, sad, and miscellaneous. That's interesting. Okay, so adjective, bad, evil, bad, disagreeable, malignant, bad, 
unpleasant, evil, giving pain, unhappiness, misery, hmm. evil, displeasing, hmm. bad of its kind, land, water, etc. Bad of value. Worse than, worst, comparison. Sad, unhappy, evil, hurtful. Mm. So when someone says you're evil, you're being hurtful. Mm. Bad, unkind. Wow. Vicious in disposition. Bad, evil, wicked, ethically. In general, of persons, of thoughts, deeds, actions. Masculine noun, evil, distress, misery, injury, <clears throat> calamity, evil, distress, adversity, evil, injury, wrong, evil, ethical. Feminine noun, evil, misery, distress, injury, evil, misery, distress. Injury, wrong, evil, ethical. Ra, from H7489, bad at, or as noun, evil, natural or moral. Adversity, affliction, bad, calamity, displeasure, distress, evil, favoredness, man, thing, exceedingly great, grievous, harm, heavy, hurtful, ill-favored, mark, mischievous mischievous, misery, not, naughty, noisome, not please, sadly, sore, sorrow, trouble, vex, wicked, wickedly, wickedness, wicked one, worse, worst, wretchedness, wrong, including feminine ra'a as adjective or noun, strong's H7451, adjective, bad, evil, distinction from noun and verb, perfect third person, masculine singular is sometimes not easy and opinions differ, masculine singular, and then they give all the, you can look this up yourself on blueletterbible.org, just plug in on that quick navigation bar, the verse or the words that you want to look up, and then make sure you pick the right uh, version that you want to learn from you can do all of them it's interesting so let's just keep reading here bad disagreeable malignant of a woman exodus 21 8 perhaps with changed accent verb third person feminine singular disagreeable unpleasing in the eyes of, this is interesting, let's show all, of poisonous herb, malignant boils, that would be evil, I <laughs> would hate to have that, God forbid, diseases, hey, diseases are evil, wow. Whoa. I mean, you know, why would Yahusha, Jesus, why would he say after he healed people of their diseases, go and sin no more? Whoa. Diseases, dis-ease. Yeah, because our body is meant to heal itself. So what's happening here? Keep it going. Hey, here's a whole bunch of, um, you know, things you can look up in Deuteronomy 28, 35, Job 7, 8, 7, excuse me. Here, let's just, okay, so when you scroll over it, I just noticed that. It highlights it in red, and then you can read it. So, so went Satan forth from the presence of the Lord and smote Job with sore boils from the sole of his foot unto his crown. Oh, that's evil. That's not cool. That's not a blessing. No, 
That's awful. That's kind of interesting, though. Job was a righteous man. So, okay, you got to read the story there. 2-7. You can always read Job to find out more. This is another one here, right in front of it. Deuteronomy 28-35. The Lord shall smite thee. The Lord? Ha ha ha. The Lord shall smite you in the knees. Oh, and in the legs. Oh, with a sore botch that cannot be healed from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. Whoa. Wow. That's interesting. Why, why, why are these things being done? Here's another one. Deuteronomy 7.15. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness. Hey, that one sounds good. And will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which thou knowest upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. Interesting. Hmm. Here's another one. Deuteronomy 28.59. Then the Lord will make thy plagues wonderful. Huh? Does that mean I'm wondering why? <laughs> Wonder, fully wondering why? And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues, and of long continuance, and sore sicknesses, and of long continuance. Hmm. Hmm. Uh, let's just go there for a second. We'll click on it. Because it's curious. I'm curious to see why the Lord would do that. Let's scroll up just a little bit. It's 2859. Keep going. Uh, oh, let's find out. <clears throat> okay, 2858. If you will not observe to do all the words of this law that are written in this book, thou and that thou mayest fear this glorious and fearful name, the Lord thy God. Oh, then the Lord will make the plagues wonderful. It does not, doesn't sound too good. And the plagues of thy seed, even great plagues of long continuance, and sore sicknesses and of long continuance. Moreover, he will bring upon thee all the diseases of Egypt which thou wast afraid of, and they shall cleave unto thee. Mm, that doesn't sound good. Also, every sickness and every plague, which is not written in the book of this law, them will the Lord bring upon thee and until you're destroyed. And, oh, by the way, this is the King James Version, because it's all ye and thou. And ye shall be left few in number, whereas you were as the stars of the heaven for multitude, because thou wouldest not obey the voice of the Lord thy God. Oh, well, we better obey. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord rejoiced over you to do good and to multiply you, so the Lord will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught. And you shall be plucked from off the land wherever you go to possess it that doesn't sound good this sounds like a curse this is deuteronomy this is telling you the blessings and the cursings so we're just going to go here and then we're going to scooch up to the top to hear what, what's the good stuff this is the bad stuff apparently and the lord shall scatter you among all people from the one end of the earth even unto the other and there thou shalt serve other gods other doctors, other scientists, other educators, other celebrities, which thou neither, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. And among these nations shall thou find no ease, neither shall the sole of thy foot have rest, but the Lord shall give thee there a trembling heart, e, and failing of eyes, O. Oh, and sorrow of mine. And thy life shall hang in doubt before thee, and thou shalt fear day and night, and shalt have no assurance of thy life. This doesn't sound good. 
in the morning thou shalt say would god it were even and at even oh evening and he and it even thou shalt say would god that it were morning this is why i don't really like the king james version because you can misinterpret if you don't understand He's saying, like, in the morning, you're going to say, oh, man, I wish it was evening. And then at the evening, you're all, I wish it was morning. For the fear of thine heart, wherewith thou shalt fear, and for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. And the Lord shall bring you un into Egypt again. Uh-oh. With ships. Whoa. By the way, whereof I spoke unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there... You shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen, and no man shall buy you. Uh, that doesn't sound good. So it's saying, and the Lord sh will bring you back into bondage again. By the way, where, where have I spoken to thee in the past? I told you, you'll not see it. You'll not be in bondage ever again. And, and there you'll be sold as slaves unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen and no man will buy you. Whoa, can't even sell this. Okay, so the ha ha, these are the bad things. These are the curses. So we better go up to the top and see if there's some good stuff. Let's see, well, how do we avoid this? Because that doesn't sound good. Oh, okay, so... That's the consequences of disobedience that we're reading. Oh, consequences. Oh, of disobedience. Hey, here it is in Leviticus 26, 14 through 46. And it's the King James Version, by the way. But if you will not hearken unto me, if you not listen to me, and will not do these commandments, and if you will despise my statutes, or if your soul abhors my judgments, so that you will not do all my commandments, but that you break my covenant, I also will do this unto you. I will even appoint over you terror, consumption, and the burning egg, I don't know what that is, that shall consume the eyes and cause sorrow of heart, and you shall sow your seed in vain. Oh, that sucks. For your enemies shall eat it. Ooh, that doesn't sound good. And I will set my face against you. And you shall be slain before your enemies. That doesn't sound good. They that hate you shall reign over you. And you shall flee when no one's even chasing after you. And if you will not yet for all this hearken. Oops. Unto me, then I will punish you seven times more for your disobedience. Ooh. Well, so you want to read some of the more of the consequences? Let's read some of them just so that we know. Deuteronomy 28, 15. But it will come to pass that if you do not listen to the voice. Oh, yes. Oh, voice of the Lord thy God. Oh, yeah. Because whose voices are we listening to? We're listening to everybody else's voices the news, the doctors, the government, the scientists, the pseudoscientists. You're not listening to the voice of the Lord, your God, to observe, to do all his commandments, what his commandments, the 10 commandments, and his statutes, which I command you this day, that all these curses that are going to be happening under here, shall come upon you and overtake you. So let's just see if some of this stuff is happening. Because, you know, if we know the bad stuff and if we have any of that going on, then we can look at the beginning part of the blessing and go, okay, that's what it is. I've been listening to everybody else and haven't been hearkening, listening to you. All right, so here it is. Deuteronomy 28, 16. Curse shall you be in the city. And cursed shall you be in the field. Cursed shall be thy basket and thy store. Oh. Cursed shall be the fruit of your body and the fruit of your land 
the increase of your kind, kind, and the flocks of your sheep. Cursed shall you be when you come in. Cursed shall you be when you go out. The Lord shall send upon you cursing, vexation, and rebuke in all that you set us your hand to do until you be destroyed. Eee. It doesn't sound good. And until you perish quickly. Yeah. Quick, quicker is better than longer. If you're going to get suffering all that whole time, right? Quality of life versus quantity. Because of thy wickedness of thy doings, whereby thou hast forsaken me. Deuteronomy 28, 21. The Lord shall make the pestilence cleave unto you until he have consumed thee from off the land whither thou goest to possess it. it. Doesn't sound good. The Lord shall smite thee with with a consumption and with a fever and with an inflammation and with an extreme burning and with the sword and with there's more and with blasting and with mildew e and they shall pursue thee until you perish this is doesn't sound good this is bad stuff we don't want this and thy heaven that is over thy head shall be brass and the earth that is under thee shall be iron the lord shall make the rain of thy land powder and dust from heaven shall it come down upon you until you be destroyed. The Lord shall cause you to be smitten before thine enemies. Thou shalt go out one way against them and flee seven ways before them and shall be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth. And thy carcass shall be meat unto all the fowls of the air and unto the beasts of the earth. And no man shall free them away. <clears throat> the Lord will smite thee with the botch of Egypt and with emeralds and with the scab and with the itch where thou canst be healed. The Lord shall smite thee with madness and blindness and astonishment of heart. And thou shalt grope at noonday as the blind gropeth in darkness. Thou shalt not prosper in thy ways, and thou shalt be only oppressed and spoiled evermore. Spoiled doesn't sound like the spoiled that we use nowadays. Like we kind of use spoiled as getting everything you want spoiled. But this means spoiled like, you know, mildew and things are getting ruined and wrecked. That's what spoiled means, okay? And no man shall save thee. Deuteronomy 28, 30. You shall betroth a wife, and another man shall lie with her. Thou shalt build a house, and you shall not dwell in it. You shall plant a vineyard, and shall not gather the grapes thereof. That sounds very counterproductive. Thine ox shall be slain before your eyes, and you shall not eat of it. Thine ass, that's a donkey, shall be violently taken away. <laughs> you could, I guess, look it up the other way. From before your face and shall not be restored to thee. <laughs> Thy sheep shall be given unto your enemies, and you will have none to rescue them. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Oh. And thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. And there shall be no might in thine hand. Yeah. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. The Lord shall smite thee in the knees. Oh, we read this one already. And in the legs with the sore botch that cannot be healed. 
from the sole of your foot to the top of your head. Oh, that's just the sound there. So you can keep reading all that, but let's go up to the top and see what the blessings are and how do we get them? Let's just see. Blessings. Here we go. Well, let's go up to Deuteronomy 21 or 28 1. And it shall come to pass if you if you listen diligently. <clears throat> you know what I want to do? I'm going to go up to here. We're going to get Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to put it up here. Do 28 1. And we are going to change right here. See this? That's King James Version. We're going to change it to something that we can read and understand better because this is, I'm having a translate. All the these and the vowels and the shells and the, all right, I think it's shell is, is the thing. So here's a new King James Version. It's still Deuteronomy 28.1. Now it shall come to pass if you diligently obey the voice of the Lord your God to observe carefully all his commandments which I command you today. This is like serious stuff right here. That the Lord your God will set you high above all nations of the earth. That sounds good. And all these blessings shall come upon you. Oh, and overtake you. <laughs> yeah, we want that. Because you obey the voice of the Lord your God. That's what we want. Blessed shall you be in the city, and blessed shall you be in the country. Blessed shall be the fruit of your body, the produce of your ground, and the increase of your herds, the increase of your cattle, and the offspring of your flocks. Blessed shall be your basket and your kneading bowl. Blessed shall you be when you come in, and blessed shall you be when you go out. The Lord will cause your enemies who rise against you to be defeated before your face. They shall come out against you one way and flee before you seven ways. The Lord will command the blessing on you in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand. And he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself. Holy means set apart. And we'll look at that word in a second. Just as he has sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. Wait just one second. What part? The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he sworn to you, if, that's a condition, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. Oh, walk in his ways. That would require action and for us to do what he wants or his ways, the way he has established his ways. Okay. Then... See, the other one was, if you do, then, then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. How? How are we called by the name of the Lord? Because we just say a name. Should we do some like name dropping and say Jesus and Jesus and God and stuff like that? No, it says up here. Deuteronomy 28, 9, the Lord will establish you as a holy people. That means set apart people to himself, just as he has sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, and walk in his ways, then, then, and only then, we don't walk in his ways then we're not going to get this part. Then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name. How are they seeing that we're called by the name of the Lord? Don't we just say Jesus and in Jesus name? Don't we use in Jesus name, those three magic words at the end? 
and can we do it uh no it says right here if you keep the commandments of the lord your god that that means we're gonna have to look at what the commandments are you know those ten commandments maybe there's more and walk in his ways then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord, and they shall be afraid of you. Ooh. Ooh. Let me just look here on Deuteronomy 28.10. Let's go to tools. And we're going to look up some definitions of that sentence there. Okay, so we've done Earth, right? H seven seven six. Eretz. It's land, Earth. Now, don't don't think about this globe thing when I say whole Earth. Whole Earth is not the globe. Okay. No. It's the land mass, earth, as opposed to heaven. You know, the sky part, the heaven, the sky part, that's not earth, that's the sky. You know, the water, that's water. The earth part is the land part. So earth is also kind of like the inhabitants of earth, like earthlings, like I'm not talking space or nothing. I'm not talking aliens or nothing i mean in a way i guess we are aliens to this world system but earth as in inhabitants of earth the landmass land country territory we went over this on the first one okay piece of ground land of canaan inhabitants city ground surface earth ground soil people of the land not people of the water or the sky Space or distance of the country, level or plain country. Plain, it's the plain. Land of the living, ends of the earth. Okay, so, oh, yeah, you need to know that it's the ground, land. All right, so really quick, you know how in Genesis 1 it says that in the beginning God made the heavens and the earth? Um, I just want to detract for a second. We're going to go over circle people are going to say circle of the earth that means it's a globe no and it's not a pizza looking thing and it's not a cookie either okay so circle uh let's see oh you're going to probably go it's he who sits above the circle of the earth so let's go over tools who stretches out the heavens like a curtain Okay, we're going to go to circle. Upon the circle, hug. Looks like chug, but hug. Hug. Let's see how it sounds. Strong's age 2329. Hug. Hug. Them luggies in the back. Hug. So look, <clears throat> circle, circuit. Anybody know what a circuit is? Circuit. How about a compass? You know, one of those compasses that tell you north, south, east, and west? Compass. Okay. So this other one here, Brown Driver Briggs, vault of the heavens. We're talking about the circuit of the heavens. That's where it's located, up there. And look, scroll down. It says, the vault, only a vault of the heavens, a circle. Okay, we're not talking about earth, people. We're not talking about the landmass. We're talking about the circle up in the skies. Have you ever seen those pictures that people take of the speed photography or slow photography? I think it's speed. And you see all those cool stars going in a circle. That's the circle of the earth. Now, I'll show you this down here. Look, down here. 
Jesenius's Hebrew Chaldee lexicon, a circle. Now, sphere, that's what we've been told is the globe. We've been told that. But look, used of the arch or vault of the sky. It's that sky part. You know, have you ever seen a terrarium? A terrarium is like you got dirt with some plants and then you kind of put like this big Tupperware bowl on the top. This is the circle up here, the arch, the vault of the sky. That's the sphere part up there. Now, don't be looking, thinking about that one NASA picture that they keep putting before your eyes, okay? Because they're mixing the air and the water and the land all together and making like an everlasting gobstopper globe conglomeration that they're making confusion and twisting up knots and tangles no you have the sky you have the land you have the water three separate exclusive individual entities or territories land air water law 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 so i'm just wanting to bring that out to you okay where were we I just thought I would mention that. Uh, we were somewhere like, you know, in Deuteronomy. There it is. Okay, so we went over Earth. We went over circle of the Earth is the circuit up there. And we're Earthlings living on the land. Okay, so here's these great blessings right here. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he's sworn to you. If you keep the commandments of the Lord, your God, and walk in his ways, then all peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. Name. That's what we were looking up. And they should be afraid of you. So we were looking up name. Let's go there. So you just use this toolbox to the left. Okay, name, here we go. Name, Sem, is it Shem, Sem? H8034, here we go. Uh, let's see, oh yeah, shame, that's right. We went over this before on the second one. Strong's H8034, shame, shame. Shame, shame, shame. Okay, primitive word to the idea of definite and conspicuous position. So it's a position. Name, renown, fame, famous. This is like your reputation. Named, hmm, they know you, infamous. A report, oh. Reputation, fame, glory. The name is designation of God. Memorial monument, shame. A primitive word, perhaps rather from H7760, through the idea of a definite and conspicuous position. Compare 8064, an appellation as a mark or a memorial of individuality by implication, honor, authority, character, plus base in fame, Famous, named, renowned report. <sighs> Constructed sometimes followed by with suffix name. I regard this word as primary. Read the full entry. Proper denoting, although kindred to its root, to mark with a sign. Oh, look at that. To mark with a sign. Like his name is sealed on our foreheads, mm. inside of our mind, inside, we have the understanding and the name to designate sign, stigma, mark with which anyone is marked from the nouns are derived to name. Some regard as shortened from by casting away, comparing the Septuagint translator who not infrequently renders in anyone's name authority in the name of Yahuwah by his authority, 
by name, by name, as to phrases, especially, let's see, to make for oneself a name. Do you understand that concept? To make yourself a name. To acquire fame for oneself, famous men. On the other hand, sons of an ignoble father, noble themselves. Glory. Oh, glory. So like when you put on the glory, you put, I will make them praised and famous. A good name, good reputation. When used in a bad sense, there is added fame after death memory. So when the phrase is to destroy, to blot out the name of any person or thing, so to blot out a people, a city, that even the name and the memory may perish from posterity, that's the opposite. Hence, a monument. Oh, oh, that's interesting. By which anyone's memory is preserved. Oh, that's interesting. This meaning appears to be very doubtful in both the cited passages. The celebrated name of God, the estimation of men concerning God in the phrase for his namesake. Oh, so for his namesake. Hmm. I always remember people used to say, for God's sake, for Christ's sake, they would say. Yeah, what about it? As his name would lead one to expect. Oh, so in his name would lead one to expect. Hence the glory of God for my name's sake, lest the glory of the divine name should suffer. And that doesn't mean allow. But in the legalese, they turn it around and say, suffer means allow. So above all thy name, Psalm 138, two, above all thy name, above all that can be predicated of thee. Yahuwah as being called on and praised by men. As to call on the name of Yahuwah, compare under the verb, those who love thy name those who delight in thy praise, the deity, as being present with mortals. For my name is in him, the angel. My name shall be there in the temple. Oh, yeah, because our body is a temple. No house had been built to the name of the Lord. Wow, that's sad. In First Kings 3, 2. Oh, that's interesting to put his name in any place, to fix his abode, see under the verb, it is often applied to the aid which God as present vouchsafes to men. O oh God, save us by thy name. The name of God. Shem, the eldest second son of Noah, from whom Genesis 10, 22 through 30, the Shemitic nations, uh, example, the Western nations of Asia, the Persians, Assyrians, Arameans, and part of the Arabs have sprung. Hmm. So name is your character and your function and your position. And if our bodies are the temple and God, the Father, Yahuwah, is in us we're obeying his word because we have it in in our heart and in our minds we have it coming out of our mouth then people will know that we we're different these people are different and that's going to take us back to those blessings right not the cursings so you know you know a book what do they say don't judge a book by its cover, but, you know, you know the contents. Blessings on obedience, so we want this stuff here. The Lord will command the blessing on you and in your storehouses and in all to which you set your hand, and he will bless you in the land which the Lord your God is giving you. The Lord will establish you as a holy people to himself, just as he's sworn to you, if you keep the commandments of the Lord your God and walk in his ways. That's Deuteronomy. 
Then all the peoples of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of the Lord. How are you called? Because you're name dropping and, you know, just saying names out of your mouth instead of uh, walking in his way. Yeah, because then that would make us a hypocrite and we're in a mask, right? Yeah, we don't want to do that. And the Lord will grant you plenty of goods in the fruit of your body and in the increase of your livestock and in the produce of your ground and in the land which the Lord swore to your fathers to give to you. The Lord will open up to you his good treasure, the heavens. Oh, yeah. To give the rain on your land and in its season and to bless all the work of your hands. You shall lend to many nations, but you shall not borrow. And the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. You shall be above only and not beneath. If you heed the commandments of the Lord your God, which I command you today and careful to observe them. So you shall not turn aside from any of the words which I command you this day to the right or to the left to go after other gods to serve them. Let's just go in the tools and we'll look up other gods for a second just to see what, what those are. Other Elohim other gods let's see h430 i sunk your battleship mm. plural oh here we go rulers rulers judges <laughs> divine ones angels gods goddess godlike one works or special possessions of god the true god and god Elohim, plural of H433, gods in the ordinary sense, but specifically used in the plural, thus especially with the article of the supreme God, occasionally applied by way of deference to magistrates, and sometimes as a superlative, angels exceeding God, gods, great judges, mighty. Here's some more rulers, judges, either as divine representatives at sacred places, wow, or as reflecting divine majesty and power. Hmm. Boy, you hear those coyote? Okay. Ooh. Okay, so other gods let's go back one for a second and we'll look up the word other because we don't want to be turning aside to other gods right a hair h312 another other following uh oh following further other different uh -huh. Properly hindered, generally next other, other man. Oh, following next and strange. Another, properly one coming behind, feminine with plural, uh, future feminine plural, another seed, seven other days. In the field of another, another man, husband, the other court, the other wall. So let's see. Properly following another. Oh, especially one who follows a first, <laughs> second from the idea of following. <laughs> yeah, I'm following that one over there. Who's following the one over there and then the one before him? The idea of following. In the following year, the next year, hence generally another. And I will not give my glory to another. Hmm. Elsewhere, who hasten elsewhere from the true God to idols. Oh, let's look up idols for a second here and then we'll finish. Idols, what are those? 
Is that like American Idol? Idolatry idols? Let's look up idol tools. Look at there's a whole bunch. Do not turn to idols. Let's see. Okay, idols. Oh, had stolen the images. Images? Is that idols? Oh. Oh, here we go. Image. Teraphim, idol, idolatry. A kind of idol used in household shrine or worship. Oh, what's this? Teraphim, a healer. Teraphim, singular or plural, a family idol. Huh. Idols, images, teraphim. A kind of idol, object of reverence. Oh, and means of divination. Oh, divination. An etymology meaning dubious, compared, say, citing, newborn. Okay, compare, always portable. Oh, it's portable. Always portable, your idols, and sometimes small. Oh, but in size and shape like a man. Uh oh. like little dolls huh that could be like that little infinity and beyond little doll as giving empty oracles oh domestic gods as if in the hebrews okay so guardians and givers of a comfortable life oh of the human figure and stature from which oracles were sought Oh, by the plural, one statue only appears to be understood. Hmm. Interesting. Oh. Well, so well, let me look at one more word. Wicked. Let's look that up. Oh, wicked. Because sometimes we need to know the definitions of stuff. Oh, but the men of Sodom were exceedingly wicked and sinful against the Lord. Okay. Wicked, here it is. H7451. Ha'ampa. Did we do this one already? Oh, it's like evil. Evil, wickedness, wicked, mischief, hurt, bad, trouble, sore affliction. Oh, okay. Bad, evil, unpleasant, displeasing, bad, worse, worse. Oh, okay. So wicked. And I also heard it's like twisted too. Like the um, priests, they used to rip the the robes after they did the sacrifices and they twist the wick the wick you would put it in the oil and wicked was twisted kind of like um when you learn something twisted the twisted teaching you're getting twisted that's not good that's not good. Disagreeable, unpleasing in the eyes, poisonous, sorrow, wretched. Hmm. Let me just see if there's anything like twisted in here. I don't know that there is, but we'll see. Oh, Leviathan, that twisted serpent. Let's go there, shall we? When they had twisted a crown of thorns and they clothed them with purple and they twisted a crown of thorns. Okay, let's just go there. Twisted. Mm -hmm. Let's see what that means. 
This is good definitions. Cornish Leviathan, is it the piercing? That crooked, oh, crooked is twisting. Okay, that crooked. Yeah, I can see that. Crooked, twisted, yeah, I can see that. Oh, let's see what it says. How do you pronounce that? Strong's Age, 6129. Akalathon. Akalathon. Okay, crooked. Tortuous, crooked. Virtuous. Hmm. Interesting. Hmm. Hmm. Yeah. So you can just click on stuff and look at the different things. But anyways, I'm getting tired. But I thought that this was important to look up the definitions of words and what they mean. Because sometimes, um, you know, in our English language, in our society, we change the names to mean something totally different. Like nowadays, if you say, hey, that's wicked, <laughs> people, kids, young people will go, oh, that's cool. Oh, that's bad. No, that's good. <laughs> it means the total opposite. It's weird. That's twisted. I mean, I have twisted wire. You know, it twists. My hair has little twists and turns. But we want to make our way straight. You don't want to be all twisted get in a tangle or a knot you don't want to have knots in your hair so you want to be made straight it's okay to have curly hair i'm just saying but i'm just saying our way the way we're supposed to be walking is with an even gait straight on the straight and narrow not all handicap and all twisted not to say that anybody who has a handicap is evil or nothing like that it's just that they have a handicap now they can't run the race as fast as you know if we're running uh the race of life you know you want to be able to have things re in good repair so that you can run otherwise people will have to carry you and then you have to depend upon those people to carry you so that's why we want to walk straight you know we want to be able to run the race that's set before us. All right. Uh, I would like to say good things for everybody, but everybody has different meanings for different words nowadays. I like the word bless. Be blessed. Be blessed. But some people, they think it's the opposite. They think saying blessing is a cursing, which I don't agree. But anyways, um, what should I say? The Lord keep you and make his face to shine upon you. Is that good enough? <laughs> good night.